So let's do a few more examples involving the normal model, different context. This says the cholesterol level of boys age 14 is approximately normal with a, a mean of 170 milligrams and, um, and a standard deviation of 30 milligrams. What percentage of 14-year-old boys have a cholesterol level higher than 240 milligrams? So let's let X be cholesterol level of a, of a particular boy. Okay, and we're looking for the percentage of such boys whose cholesterol level is greater than 240 milligrams. So let's go to our diagram. We make our mean the center. We put, uh, we put the 240 in the right relative location. And since we want cholesterol level higher, we're going to shade the right-hand side. Okay, and we're interested in that percentage. So first we find the z-score that goes with 240. So 240 minus 170. We divide by 30. And when we do that, you get 2.3. We'll go to hundredths, 2.33. Okay, so the so I'll, I'll just write this again as usual. This is not necessary, but I like to do it. The percentage of boys whose uh, cholesterol level is greater than 240 milligrams is the same as the percentage of z-scores that are greater than 2.33 in general. And taking out the calculator, using our function, I'm going to put 2.33 first, then use 100 to stand in for infinity, and we get 0 0.0099. So moving the decimal over two places and interpreting, I'll say about 0.99, so just about 1% of 14-year-old boys. have cholesterol. I kind of need to intrude on this space here. Have cholesterol uh, 240 milligrams or greater. This says what percentage of 14 year old boys have a cholesterol level less than 220? So I don't I guess I didn't draw a picture here, but we'll make one. Again we put the 170 here. 220 is here, and we're looking for this area. So since it says a cholesterol level less than, we're shading left. Okay, and so then we get the z-score that goes with 220. So the z-score that goes, well first let's write our percentage statement. We can still use the variable above because it's the same context. So the percentage of Boise percentage or whose cholesterol is less than 220. So let's get the Z score. We do 220 minus 170 and divide by the number the standard deviation, which is 30. And we get 1.67. Okay, so percentage of boys who have that cholesterol or lower is the same as the percentage of z-scores that are less than 1.67 in general. And we do this on the calculator. So this time we need to put negative 100 first to correspond with the left infinitely long tail. And then our next number is going to be 1.67. So we get 95 point um, 
0.3%. So about 95.3%. of 14 year old boys. Half cholesterol less than 220 milligrams. Okay, so we've dealt with like, we've dealt with percentages that go from one tail to the other, or from one value to either tail. In the next example, we'll be looking at percentages that fall between two, two data values. And just to kind of wrap up this type of example, we'll, uh, we'll do that so that you can, you can see what that looks like and get into the habit of um, using the calculator correctly. All right, so same context. This time it says, what percentage of 14-year-old boys have a cholesterol level between 170 and 220? And again, as usual, we put 170 in the middle, 220 is here. Because we're asked for the percentage of boys who have cholesterol between those values, we are actually interested in this area, which for our first example doesn't go to a tail. Okay, So what this means is we need to find z-scores. We need to find z-scores that, um, that go with both of these values. So Again, we're trying to find the percentage of boys who have cholesterol between these two values. So that basically, mathematically, would turn into that statement, between those two values. Now, um, we need to turn those values into z-scores. Um, again, I'm using x from the previous slide. Same, it means the same thing. So. The z-score, let's put z1 for this 170. It's 170 minus the mean, which is 170, divided by the standard deviation, which is 30, and that's 0. Which should make sense, because if you are the, if your score is the mean, your z-score is 0. Your sta 0 standard deviations from the mean. And the second z-score would be 220 minus 170, divided by 30, which I think we found before it was 1.67. Okay, so the percentage of the percentage of boys in this range is the same as the percentage of z-scores in general that are between 0 and 1.67. So we take out our calculator, and this is what's going to be a little new. The first number we put is that first z-score, which is 0, and then the next number is 1.67. So we don't put 100 because we're not going off to one of the tails. We don't put 100 or negative 100. We're actually getting the values the, the percentage between two different z, two z-scores, which are actual, actual values. So we get point, um, 0.453. Okay, and so we will answer that about... 45.3% of boys have a cholesterol level between 170. Okay. Um, this last example was really intended to just give you an idea of how wor how questions can be worded differently. Uh, I mean, this is a, this says your younger brother has a cholesterol level of 190 milligrams. How does this cholesterol level compare to other boys his age? I mean, that's just a, another way of saying that is, you know, or asking that question is, um, and, and we could answer this in many ways. We could talk about the percentage of boys who have a cholesterol greater than that and answer the question that way. Or we could answer the question by, finding the percentage of boys who have a cholesterol that's less than 190 and answer it that way. Either way, I mean, if I say I'm taller than 80% of the population, that's one way of giving a statement. I could also say I'm shorter than 20% of the population. It says the same thing. So I guess we'll just, uh, we'll reinterpret this to being uh, what percentage of 
14 year old boys. have cholesterol, let's say lower than 190 milligrams. Because once we answer that, we can say, oh, this, you know, your younger brother has, um, your, your younger brother has uh, cholesterol greater than whatever percentage that is. And we can introduce a new concept, which is a percentile. So let's do that here. So as usual, we put the, the mean in the middle. 170 and 190 is over here on the right. So the way we decided to answer this question is we're going to find this area. Okay, and so we want the percentage of boys whose cholesterol is less than 190 we get the z-score. So we do 190 minus 170 by, divided by 30. At a certain point, you really automate that process there. So that's 0.67. Okay, and so the percentage of boys who have a cholesterol less than 190 is the same as the percentage of z-scores that are less than 0.67 in general. And on the calculator, that produces 0.67. So this time, again, I need to use negative 100 to stand in for this left tail here, which goes off to negative infinity. So negative 100 comma 0.67 equals uh, 0.748. So there's a couple ways of answering this question. You could say your younger brother, his, his cholesterol is greater than or higher than 74.8% of 14-year-old boys, or, you know, boys his age. That's one way of answering it. Uh, you could, I guess, switch the angle and say that um, your brother has a, has a uh, cholesterol level that's less than um, whatever whatever the difference between 74.8% and 100% uh, is. I think it's 25.2%. You could say his cholesterol is less than 25.2% of boys his age. That's another way of phrasing it. it. says the same thing. The other thing you could say is you could say he's in the 74th percentile. So your brother, I want to answer it that way. He is in the 74th percentile. So many of you, if you've taken the SATs or, or any other standardized tests, you may get a, you may get like your report back, which gives you your percentile. That that is, the percentage, the percentage interval you're in. So if you're in the seventy fourth percentile. You're you're basically you're better. You, you know your score or your whatever trait that's being measured, is greater than seventy four percent of those who took the test that day or, or whatever. So that's just another option for phrasing your answers, and you'll want to, you know, interpret it correctly, too. Okay, so that, that wraps up the skills you'll need in order to do normal distribution problems. My recommendation is to make sure you're savvy with the calculator. Do your best to adopt the notation I'm using. And, um, and you know, always interpret your answer by writing sentences that way teacher, for instance, knows that you understand what the problem was about to begin with.